All right, module uh, seven. Video 7B. We are looking at pages 219 through 217 today. However, the first four pages of those, I want you guys just to read on your own and get a basic understanding of atomic structure and how our understanding of atomic structure has changed historically. So you'll begin by looking at what used to be called, what was called as the plum pudding theory, and then move on to the Rutherford model. Now, both of these models of the atom are outdated. Um, our current model comes to us from a scientist named Niels Bohr. Um, but in order to understand his atomic structure theory, we need to take a look at light and understand something about light. So we are beginning today with notes on the nature of light. First of all, there is the particle wave duality theory. This states that light behaves as both a particle and a wave. Okay, so light can travel or behave as particles. It also behaves as a wave, which is a little tricky to understand it behaving as two things at once, but sometimes we have to bend our minds to do that. So again, that's the particle wave duality theory. Uh, we're gonna be mostly studying and learning about light as a wave. So if you take a look at figure 7.7, .7, you will see um, some of the definitions that we're gonna go over illustrated in this figure. So I'll keep your book open to there, please. When we think of light as a wave, it has to have crests. Crests are the high points of the wave. And troughs. Troughs are the low points. Okay? And then the wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between the crests, the distance between the crests, and I'm just gonna put or troughs, because you can really measure from, you can measure from one crest to the next crest to get the wavelength, or you can measure from one trough to the next trough to get the wavelength. You'd get the same distance, as you can see from the figure. So take a look at that. Um, the distance between the crests or troughs of a wave. Okay? The units that we measure wave, wavelength in are meters, or depending on how big the wavelength is, sometimes it would be centimeters, or very commonly nanometers, or NM. NM are nanometers. And a nanometer is 10 to the negative ninth power meter, okay? So one nanometer equals 10 to the negative ninth meters. That's the conversion factor, which you will need to know, okay? Uh, wavelength is abbreviated as Lambda. This is from the Greek alphabet. Okay, it's pronounced lambda. And that's the symbol that we use for wavelength. Wavelength determines the color of the light. Okay, so in light, there's something called the visible spectrum. There are a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different types of light that we receive from the sun. There's only a small amount of light, actually, that we can actually see. It's called the visible spectrum. Visible spectrum. And you guys have probably heard the acronym ROY G BIV. Okay? This stands for the different colors of the light in order of their uh, decreasing wavelength. Okay, so R is red, O is orange. You guys can write these in on your own, they're in your book. Y is yellow, G green, B blue, I indigo, V violet. Okay, so depending on the size of the wavelength, 
That's what determines the color of the light, okay? And the longest wavelength, a long wavelength would look like this. Okay, remember you're measuring from one crest to another crest. That'd be a long wavelength. So the longest wavelength is over here and would show up as red. The shorter the wavelength gets, it moves this way on the visible spectrum. So that over here you have a very short wavelength from here to here, okay? So this would be the shorter wavelengths. Move over there, plant, so we can see. Okay, so that is the visible spectrum. Again, I know that you will be reading this in your book, so if you have a better way or if you wanna be more detailed in your notes, add it in right here about the visible spectrum, okay? But know that the longer wavelengths are down here by red, and then as the wavelengths get shorter, they move this way on the visible spectrum until the shorter wavelengths would be the color violet. Okay, I've decided to do a little um, representation of figure 7.7 for your notes. Um, so let's add this in. Figure 7.7 looks something like this. Okay, this is light as a wave. Light as a wave. All right? And so far we've talked about wavelength. So if the top is called a crest, we measure wavelength from one crest, oops, that's not exactly in the center, but it should be at the highest peak of the crest, to the next crest, okay? And that is the wavelength from one crest to the next. You could also measure it from one trough to the next and it should be the same, okay? That is wavelength. We've got a crest, we've got, let's label this down here as a trough. That's the lowest point. Okay, so we've talked about wavelength of a wave. Next, you need to know amplitude, what amplitude means. Amplitude, we measure from this kind of median baseline that slices right through the middle of the wave. And amplitude is measuring either the height of a crest or the depth of a trough, okay? Again, it should be the same. I haven't drawn my picture perfectly, but figure 7.7 .7 in your book shows it too. Um, so amplitude, it is, let's put in a definition. It's the measure of the height of crest or the depth of a trough in the wave, okay? It's abbreviated as capital A, like I've done here up in your figure. We do not need to include units in our notes. There are units for amplitude, but we're not actually using amplitude in any of our calculations this module, so we don't need to worry about the units. You do, however, need to know that the amplitude the height of the wave determines the brightness of the light, okay? Meaning that an increased at amplitude, increased A, means a brighter light. Okay, so the larger your amplitude, the brighter your light. The dimmer, or sorry, the, um, the smaller your amplitude, the dimmer your light. You do need to know that. So that's amplitude. Next up is the speed of light. The speed of light is a constant, meaning it never changes, okay? It is a physical constant. It is abbreviated as lowercase c, and it equals 3.0 times 10 to the eighth power meters per second, okay? It is how fast light moves. You don't have to know this number, it will be given to you on the test. So you do not need to memorize it. So that's speed of light. The last thing we need to talk about for light is the frequency. 
okay? Frequency. Frequency is the number of crests, the number of crests. Again, you could also otherwise measure the troughs. You can't measure both, you can pick one or the other. So I'll put four troughs. The number of crests or troughs that pass a given point each second. Okay, so the best way to picture frequency is you're imagining this wave, okay? Say I am the given point over here and however fast this wave is moving, you can measure how many, how many crests are hitting me, okay? So this crest is moving across, this crest is moving across, it's hitting me one crest, two crests, three crests. How many are hitting me per second, okay? Imagine yourself standing on a beach and the waves are rolling in. The frequency of the waves is how many crests of the waves are hitting you each second. That's frequency. The units are in Hertz, capital H-Z, which means one per second, okay? Hertz means one, one per second, and it's abbreviated with a lowercase f. That's frequency. Oh, can you hear voices upstairs? My children upstairs are talking. Okay, and lastly, for this video, I'm going to give you an equation. The first equation that we'll use in my next video, we'll be plugging that equation in and using that equation to solve some problems. So the first equation, uh, I think I can squeeze it in down here. Frequency, which is F, equals C over lambda. Pretty simple, right? You have to memorize this, so I'm going to circle it. Our test this module will not be open book. You will have to memorize some things. So we've got frequency equals C over lambda, which means the speed of light, if you remember what they, the abbreviations mean, the speed of light divided by the wavelength of the light gives you the frequency. Okay? And that is video seven.